You're listening to 24-7 Miami Radio. Hello, everyone, and welcome to In the Bleachers. I'm Drew. Oh, wait, I'm not Drew. <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> I forgot my own name. <laughs> you know what? I'm not going to stop the recording. I'm going to keep on going. I don't care. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually Lou. I'm Drew. I don't know who he is. Yeah, why the heck? That was so funny. Welcome, boys. Welcome, boys. Welcome, boys. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome to the show. Uh, this is our episode of In the Bleachers. I know it's been a while. Uh, you know, we talk about different things. It could be sports. It could be everything else. You know, conversations. Mm-hmm. So, yes. just to kick it off, we're going to talk about the draft. And uh, yes. now, okay. Everyone, I, I know I know how the NFL likes to keep busy and have us all entertained what's going on. You know, even when there's no football going on. And baseball just started. And NBA playoffs are about to start off very soon. But the draft, that's where, we're, that's, where we're, that's where we're starting the show. Yes, let's start over there. I know it's how, wait, how, how long, wait, how, how much uh, till we have the draft? Is it two weeks? 16 oh. days. 16 days, okay, okay. 16 days. So, any any new news on the on the draft? Um, apparently, quarterbacks are going to go in the first round. Looking at three of them going for the first round. One from uh, UCLA, one from USC... And another one from Oklahoma, I believe. Um, the way it goes is like this. Right now, before after any trades, but right now, Cleveland is first pick. They have the first pick and the fourth pick. They also have um, uh, a need for, I believe it's tight end, I believe, I think like that. So basically you have number one quarterback going to them. Uh, the next pick, number two in the draft, is the New York G men, that'll be the Giants. Uh, this is Mr. Louis' team. Yes. Um, and they're, they're looking at taking the guy from um, Pennsylvania, the running back. He's got an unusual name, and I can't remember it, but he's really good. Um, they'll need that because if they're going to stick with Eli, which you can get probably two more, two, three more years with him, I think they should. Um, I don't think they should waste their pick on. A quarterback right now because they can probably pick one up later on down the road. Uh, then comes my guys, J E T S. They're looking at picking up a quarterback right now. They're romancing um, the guy from Oklahoma. What's his name? Maybury? Marbury? Maybury? 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 Maury? 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 I just hope they they make a good pick because they need the help. Jesus Christ, they don't. Um, now back to number four, you yeah, have back to Cleveland. And there's this kid out of South Carolina, the defensive end. It's supposed to be super good. So if they end, end up getting their first quarterback and their defensive end in the first round, they could be they could make some serious noise later on down the road. I would definitely look out for them. Um, those are the top four picks. I don't know who's five. I can't remember who's five, but those are the ones that really concern me, Louis. You know, okay. Yeah, exactly, right. exactly. You know, because you know, yeah. right now, I mean, again, I know in another episode we'll get much more in depth to the to the draft, the NFL too, draft. Yeah. If, you know, we have so much stuff going on right now. Again, like we have we have the NBA playoffs about to start. Uh, we have, you know, um, we have the MLB just, you know, the Major League Baseball the season just started, practically just started. It's it's fresh. Yeah, there's a record on it. So yeah, so so you know, we we have a lot of things to talk about. So I, I by the way, folks, if you're listening, this is gonna be a, a shorter episode than our normal ones. It's not gonna be a full hour episode. You'll catch that on our next show. On this one, it's gonna be a half hour episode. Half hour episode. What? You know, just what? Yes, yes. You know, just just keep you updated can we, with. with can we pay the bill, man. Come yeah, on. yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, you know what? I don't have enough to have for the next uh, to the, the other half hour of the show. Okay, fine. <laughs> It'll be some infomercial. Anyway, yeah. So, <laughs> you know, you know. So, this, so th- this will be one of those condensed episodes of uh, in the bleachers. You know, just so you guys to catch up. You know, so you guys can hear what, what's going on with uh, 
what's going on with our show and uh, what do we have entertainment wise? Also, um, <laughs> oh, oh, I want to mention one thing. You know, Drew, uh, here yeah. at twenty uh, four seven Miami, we're going to be going to um, Warrior Breed Wrestling on Saturday and doing play by play with uh, the ca- the guys from the Few Show, and we'll be doing a uh, <laughs> live wrestling play by play here. Awesome. Yeah. So and then also also to, also on Wednesday, if you're hearing this on Wednesday or if you're past it, you missed it. You can catch on. Well, we'll have it on Twenty Four Seven Miami on the on the Facebook page, and we'll have it on the site. It'll be the um, Cannon Fire is going live uh, from uh, going live tomorrow around six thirty ish. We're going to be going live, and we're doing a show from there with Cannon Fire. His uh, Adrian Mikeez, the host, will be taking questions. Talking to everybody live from the cannon fire, and uh, we'll, again, we'll post a link on on Twitter for some Facebook page, so you guys can comment and talk to him also. So yeah, we have those kind of things going on here at Twenty Four Seven Miami. Just had to throw that in there just before we get going here. All right, um, what other topic we have out there, uh, Drew? What other things you want you have out there that's been you wanted to catch up with since we haven't caught up in a while on this show? Yeah, yeah, right. Well, um, you mentioned the wrestling folks. Um, I know I don't know if you guys are knowing. Coming up in July is the uh, Florida Supercon. Yes. Um, that's the big convention down here uh, in Florida for us nerds and nerdettes. Um, what they're going to have is they're going to have some guys from wrestling there. So I'm not sure if you, uh, if you, oh, yeah, you guys yeah. know that. Yeah, I, I know. I know the people who I know. I, I know the people who put, who put those shows together. They're pretty funny because I'm, I'm uh, uh, last year I went to not that one in particular, but I went to another one that was by the same company. And what mm-hmm. they had was, um, they have like characters from video games uh, come mm-hmm. out. And, you know, the wrestlers dress up as those characters, and, and they come in and wrestle. So, uh-huh. in, in one of them, I remember one time some guy dressed up as Mario came out, and, and when he uh-huh. and when he was hit, he he threw coins in the air like if you know like if he was Mario getting <laughs> hit by something. Yeah, right. Yeah, so you know we we also had like a Spider Man character go in there. Mm-hmm. Well, this is this is um. Not so much um, those guys, but these are like the wrestlers, the real wrestlers from, well, I don't want to say real wrestlers, but wrestlers from WWE and so forth. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. And I'm sorry, yeah. People. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we, uh, again, all, yeah, they've also had like um, superstars. I remember one year they had Ric Flair there. Yeah, like this year they're looking at uh, uh, Lita there, the Gangrel there, the King, Jimmy Terry Lawyer, uh, Trisha Stratus. So you have a couple people there you want to go down and sign autographs or not. Of course, they have the other sci-fi people that normally are there. Uh, big draw this year is going to be William Shatner. He's supposed to be there. Oh, and awesome. um, if, if anybody's interested in the Marvel Universe, uh, you're talking about Luke Cage is supposed to be there. Uh, the guy from Guardians of the Galaxy, the big guy, is supposed to be there. Uh, Sean Gunn, he's supposed to be there. So there's going to be um, a lot of people there that, um, if you're interested, come out and see him. Come out and see him. Well, you know what? Who knows? We might be there. We might uh, do an episode or something over there. That would be wonderful. That would be wonderful. So uh, I'll be volunteering in the, in the department. So if you guys see me, by all means, shout out. I'd love to take some pictures or maybe an autograph or two. Yes. And I won't charge you. <laughs> yeah, right. Like the other, like everybody in there. Yeah, to, to re- yeah, yeah, right. a little picture. Five, ten bucks, buddy. <laughs> ten bucks. I wish. Ten bucks is cheap. But uh, yeah, we have a good time. So, uh, no, yeah, you know what? We'll be right back after this. We've uh, reached a little bit of a time here. We'll be right back. 24-7 Miami Radio. All right, folks, uh, we're back here in the bleachers in our, our shorter half-hour version. Here we are in segment two because I know you're at home writing this stuff down, which you should be, by the way. There's a test at the end of the show. Yeah, there's a test at the end of the Yep, that's the end of the show. So now let's have a little bit of the news, what's going on right now. We have uh, Zuckerberg tells Congress we, did not, we didn't do enough to prevent privacy crisis that rocked Facebook. So, he, he's, so Mark Zuckerberg is testifying in front of a, a Senate Judiciary uh, and Commerce Committee, committee and uh, he was grilled. I mean, I was listening to that stuff earlier today, and uh, he was being grilled on, you know, the people asking, hey, what hotel did you stay at? Uh, you know, who, who did he visit? Who did he talk to? And, you know, he said, well, you know, do you think we should all know that? He's like, well, not in this public setting. And, um, you know, he was, he was in a hot seat right now. And, and, and I think they, they should be. What do you think, Drew? I, you know what? I, I, I can see why people say that. And I, I agree to some point. But at the end of the day, 
you're putting your stuff out there, you need to be responsible for what's going on with it. If you don't know what someone's doing with your stuff, don't give me stuff. You know, um, I got Facebook, I got Twitter, I got Instagram. Everything I put on there is what I put on there. So, yeah, this is there. So, yeah, that's there. Now, I put my own restrictions and say, hey, only my friends can see it. Only my friends will know about it. And then, the, you know, the show's just for everybody. But, you know, I got to be responsible just like everybody else is. Well, yeah. I, I mean, I agree with you because yeah, I'm also private on with whatever I post out there and whatever I put out on social media. But uh, I guess here, the, I think it's the question is much more in-depth as in to what the company knows and what they do with that information. It's kind of like, like the, you know, the, the telemarketing aspect of it where, where you know, they, they, get your, or they get your information, they get what you like, and they throw those ads in front of you because they think that you're going to like that. So I think that's where the, the the concerns are also are also I mean not 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 the main concern I think it's also part of it. Well, they're gonna put stuff up because that's how they make their money. They're tracking where you where you're going. Yeah, they're gonna put they're gonna put ads up for that. I just don't think that it's necessarily all Facebook. Yeah, it is in the sense of what they do with the detail, but again, if you were out there, you were doing that. It's gonna know it's you. I feel bad for the people that did that. I'm waiting for my email saying what they got from me, but I don't put my credit card on. I don't put my other stuff on. I'm, I'm very careful with that, especially if I got ripped off before. So I think it's necessary to a point. I just feel bad that it's Facebook and people are trying to dip on it because you know what? In, in a roundabout way, Facebook's not a bad thing. I'll be honest with you, it's not. Um, with the right protection and the right tools, it's a pretty good thing. I enjoy talking to my friends from my high school. I enjoy talking with my friends that I haven't talked to in five or ten years because you have no other way to get a hold of them. Facebook will never go away. It may be limited, but it'll never go away. And I hope it doesn't. Well, again, yeah, I, I, I agree with that aspect of it. It's just, um, you know, it's true. It's like whatever you put on there, Whatever you put on there, you put on there because you agreed to put on it. You, you put out right. there. But now, the, you know, now when people start going into the aspect of uh, those apps and the little video games and putting your information and buying stuff where you can order, you can even order Lyft or Uber on your on the Messenger. Now it's getting a little bit too much in there. But um, yeah, yeah, and and also too, I think the app, as you know, also the big concern is also the app because the app itself can look at you know. And, and, and you see that, and you see that stuff that it asks you. You know, this phone can check your phone lines, or, or it'll check your messages to see who you're speaking with. It's like, whoa, wait a minute. Whenever I see that, you know, you, you know, you, you it, it's always that moment where you say, ah, f- it. I'm going to, I'll click because I want, because I want to have it. But, you know, you you have to think about it. You, ha- you yeah, there, there should be some responsibility on the person who, who decides to do that. But there should also be responsibility on the side of Facebook on what they do with that information and how, you know... They, and, need, to, they need to be clear with the people what they do with it. Yes, I agree. But you also, and you're right, totally right. If you hit that allow button, then you allow it. Which, you know, I always... People go to, um, people go, they go to stores and they sell those, those, those things for contests, you know, and they do they also do it all over online, those things for contests, and they tell you to put in your name and put in your phone number, that kind of thing. Well, you don't read the fine print that says they can sell your information. That's why people are who are on the no call list are still getting phone calls because you went somewhere else and allowed them to put your name back on the list. Yeah, exactly. You the fine print. Yeah, you you know uh, you know it's funny whenever I go to like stores. Oh, you you want to put you want to put your number? Uh, uh no. You want you have information? You have an email? No. I rather not do that. I say it, I don't rather not do that. Now I have to admit also one thing. I also have um. I have a Google number, uh-huh. so and I create it for the purpose of whenever I go to places or businesses, like they want to sell me something or whatever. I'm like, oh, you want my number? You need my number? You really need it? Fine, here's my number. So I, I give them that number, right? And uh-huh. also, also funny part is that whenever I give that number too, I, I sometimes give it to other people, and I have to remind, I have to remind myself, oh, wait a minute, who is this again? Because, <laughs> because you know, sometimes I, you know, I change phones and change numbers and I lose contacts, but. <laughs> But when I but when I do that that thing of giving that that Google number, oh man, mm-hmm. I don't I don't you know because that number that number is around forever however long Google is right I guess but it'll be around pretty long <laughs> pretty long so 
Yeah, yeah. I, I, I do that. I, you know, I don't give them that information. Or an email. Oh, you want an email? I give them another side email that I use that that I don't use that I only use like for that purpose. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. You, also, be responsible from your end, but also we want to know what they're doing with all that information. Right. What are you gonna do with it? Why do you need it? Ask questions. So yeah, the. <laughs> You know, and, and in one and in one statement that uh, Florida Senator Bill Nelson was said is if Facebook and other online companies will not or cannot fix these privacy invasions, then we will. So you know that's one of the highest ranking Democrats on the Commerce Committee. So I mean I know that th- some senators are you know are on the pressure to do something about this. So who knows? I mean yeah, what, what will be coming up? I mean I heard questions of. You know how long? How, you know how long can you have? Uh, uh, or how long does it, will it have? Let me say. Let me say it correctly. The, there's a time period where they have to tell you what they're doing with your information. Right. So. But I, I, I got a problem with that statement. I have a problem with that statement. These guys are so worried about privacy, and the reason why they're so worried about privacy is because their privacy is also affected. So, and their family's privacy is affected. But they yet they're not in a rush to fix gun control. They're not arrested, fixed the immigration. They're not arrested, fixed DACA. So you know what? Part of me is like, you know what? Pick your pick your poison, pick your poison. But don't don't excuse me. Don't not fix everything else. You know, Z- Zuckerberg uh, during the hearing also said, he said we didn't take a broad enough view of our responsibility, and that was a big mistake. And it was my mistake, and I'm sorry. I started Facebook, I run it, and I'm responsible for what happens here. So he he did make those those statements uh, during the 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 committee hearing. Now also, what a question was asked was if he was in if he was part of the the Russia disinformation and the campaign uh, that happened on 2016. If anything he had any, had if he had any if if he was working on anything to help fix that and he says yeah that's one of my biggest regrets and it says one of my top priorities in 2018 is to get that right he also confirmed that he is he also has answered questions from the uh Mueller investigation so he says yeah i know we're working with him is what zucker said zuckerberg said yeah so i think uh i think uh, i I can appreciate that And, and you know what? I'm glad that someone like that is going to say that because they're not going to pussyfoot around and blame somebody else and, and and push the thing away. And listen, you did it. You didn't do it. I don't listen. Every, everybody knows a company CEO doesn't know the entire workings of his company. Everybody knows that. Yeah. Everybody knows. He's, he's, he's more of a broad, overspectral view of it, but they don't know necessarily the details. They don't know the guy on on a desk seven on row R eight. He doesn't he doesn't know his name, but you know they're going to be responsible for things when things go down. Oh sure. Do I think he should leave? No. And the reason why he shouldn't leave is because he does know how this whole thing works. Yep, exactly. If you get rid of him, it's going to take even longer to fix. Yeah. So no, I don't think he needs to go, and no, I don't think he's necessarily. Uh, an evil thing that happened as far as from their point of view. It's what happened after they got it. But you know what? It's the same thing with a gun. The gun's not evil. It's whoever uses it is. So do they do they go that way with it? I would love to see them go that way with it, but they're not going to. They're not going to. And it's, like I said, I'm still waiting to see them fix gun control. You know. It's, it's, it's so funny how everybody's on the board with this because they're just using this book as a scapegoat. Yeah, yeah, they're using him as a scapegoat for, for, for well, I, you know what happened with uh, Cambridge Analytica, which is uh, exactly. a political consul- uh, consulting firm that had gained access to personal data of 87 million Facebook users, including 71 mm-hmm. million Americans are part of that. So, yeah, that, that's another investigation that I, that he did also mention that was uh, being done in uh, in uh, in the UK. So he's also helping with that yep. investigation over there as well. So who knows? He may be, he may he may be also be brought into a, a hearing out in the UK as well. Well, no, they said that um, they were sending someone out to the UK, but it won't be him. Oh, it won't be him. He's not he's not going. No, he's a single vice president out there. 
Oh, I, because I, I know everybody wants to have him actually sit out there. Because in the past they've always sent somebody else, but they actually everybody wants everybody wants to see him. So, yeah, it, it was a. They, want, they, they just want to, you know, yell at him. But you know, he needs to go back there and fix this crap. So, I don't blame him for not going. You know, and another thing, you know, he doesn't respond to their government. He's not a citizen of their government, so he doesn't need to go. In my opinion, I don't, you know, it's, it's, you remember he's overseas there. It's not a, it's not a U.S. government. He's not a U.S. He's not, he's not a, a, a British citizen, so I don't think he needs to be respond out there. Send whoever you want, but get this stuff fixed. You know? Yeah, that, that's so. That, that's uh, that part of the news, and we'll be right back with more news in uh, in a few seconds. Twenty four seven Miami Radio. <laughs> Right, and we are back here for segment three of the shorter version of In the Bleachers. I'm Drew. No, no, no you're not. I, I tricked you. You see how I got that one? Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm not Drew. I'm actually Lou. He is Drew. <laughs> I'm Drew. <laughs> see, I should have, this one I was going to trick you on this one. So anyway, <laughs> I want to see if you, if you were going to say Lou. Anyway, now I'll come back here. Now Drew has entertainment for us. Now Drew, what do you have? Sure thing. Uh, first, let's start off with a congratulations to the boys at MCU. Uh, Black Panther has now surpassed Titanic as number three all time domestically in gross revenue. So the boys are making money left and right, hand with fist. And the movie has been only been out for a couple of months. Go figure. Uh, today, I want to say happy birthday to Daisy Ridley. She is 26 today. Happy birthday to her. Uh, the guy that sees dead people, Haley Joe Osment, he is 30 today. Uh, also, uh, Max friend Shutao, he is 89. The guy's 112, I really, if you think about it. Um, <laughs> Steven Seagal is 66. Uh, I should drop that soon. And Orlando Jones, Speedbox Jones, is uh, 50 years old. Now, those of you who know, I don't know, my birthday is on Thursday. That's right, Thursday. I take cash and credit cards and also checks. Uh, <laughs> sharing my birthday with me is uh, Claire Danes. She's 38. Lucky. <laughs> Brooklyn Decker is 30. Nice. Uh, Sharon Doherty is 46. Hope she gets better. And uh, Ed O'Neill is my birthday. Nice. So does Nick Brandon, who is uh, on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Xander, he shares my birthday. And so is David Letterman. So let's give a round of applause to all these birthday people coming up here. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Drew. Happy birthday. Yes. So, okay, now I also have entertainment news also. Shocking, yes. shocking, breaking news. Not breaking. Shocking news. Shocking. Tristan Thompson cheating on Chloe with two women, making out, grabbing junk, and motorboating. Just sisters. <laughs> so, yeah, so Tristan Thompson was uh, brazenly cheating on Chloe with not one, but two back in October while Chloe was three months pregnant. So that's what's going on right now in that world. And by the way, uh, Chloe is due to give birth to her first child at the end of this month. So I'll be following that show. And somehow you made it onto this show. Congratulations. You just heard some uh, 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 Kardashian news. No. Sorry. Spit a little in my mouth there a little bit. (laughs) So, yeah. So yeah, that, that's uh, I have that also going on, and uh, let me see here. I have other other. Th- oh man, I had something else going on. Oh, oh, you know what? Oh. One thing we did yes. want to mention. Um, you know, we we have Exotica coming up soon. I have I haven't the connections haven't been made yet and everything, but we will be there. We'll find a way to be there. Yes, in the back door if I have to. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you leave the back door open for us. Bam. <laughs> so yeah, so we have that coming up. Uh, we have that that coming up very soon. Uh, I believe it's in, uh, in July. So I'll be in town for that stuff. Now you know. Um, also, I want to mention one thing too. Um, the Mets are in town in baseball. The Mets are eight and oh sorry seven and one, and they're facing the Marlins. So I'm glad for my my New York Mets team playing good over here. And um, yeah, I just, I'm just I don't know why I just want to say that. Shout out! <laughs> I got no reason for saying that. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, okay, the Marlins aren't doing too bad. I think they're I want to say three and five maybe, but they're doing a lot better than they thought they would. But again, the season's only a week old, so give them some time. Um, 
Let me see. Oh, one more thing for entertainment news. If you get a chance, go see Ready Player One. I got to see that movie with my kids, and uh, they liked it pretty much. So I definitely recommend that movie. Well, um, hold on. I want to ask you about that movie. I, now, I've heard like there's a, like, a lot of references to the 80s in there. Oh, it's every video game is in there. Oh, really? So, so like, okay, so let, let's do an impromptu review of the movie. What, what, oh, sure. Uh, what, what would you give this movie, and uh, basically, what's, what's the plot about it? Uh, basically, what the plot is, is that it's, a, it's an utopia that everybody plays in this virtual world when they're not working, whatever have you. And uh, your status is how you do in this game. So if you can beat the game, you get to earn the company and do the status. But like a lot of these things, there's always that one company that's got all the players and I'm working for them and they're trying to bust up and, and win those those contests and so forth. So uh, basically this is down to one little guy who works in the, or lives in the, you know, the poor part of town and he's trying to win the whole contest and get it out of And it's uh, a pretty good puzzle because a lot of the video games are there, a lot of the cartoon characters are there, a lot of references to 80s stuff. So if you're like me, you're going to love the movie because it's from your childhood. And uh, what, what would you give this movie? Uh, actually, it was better than I thought it was. Uh, I'll give it a four out of five. Actually, no, I'll give it a three out of five. Three out of five. Uh, three and a half out of five. No, no, no movie gets a five, but it was definitely... No a movie movie, uh, No movie gets a five? Whoa, what's no up? Movie gets a five. Come on, give somebody a chance. Give somebody hope. Okay, two movies get a five. First one is Back to the Future, the original. That gets a five. The second one... <laughs> Is Captain America, the first Avenger. That gets a five. Other than that, nobody gets a five. Nobody. Nobody here. Nobody gets a five. Okay, okay, okay. And then, uh, so, so yeah, you said uh, three and a half out of five. And uh, so, so was it also, like, well, you did mention there that it is entertaining for you as an adult, but is it also entertaining for kids who, who some, some, yes. some, sometimes these references might, might pass them? It is because it, at the end of the game, it, it's playing, um, uh, it's about a video game, so... If they're into video games, I think they'll be into it. Now, I think if you're dealing with teenagers, they'll like it. Anyone younger than a teenager might not like it as much. So I will stick with that. Ah, okay, okay. So, okay, that's good because uh, I have kids also and I'm thinking about taking them to see that movie. I think they'll like it. I think they'll like it. If they like video games, they'll like it. And there's enough story there that you're not focusing on video games. All right, and what are the movies you have uh, to review for us? I have that one and I'm looking to review uh, Avengers... In 20 days. Yes, yes. You know, um, I know we have a, on the 21st Miami Network, we have other shows that, the co that cover that stuff, but this is it this doesn't mean we can't cover it either. So, okay, so yeah. Um, what are the news you have in the entertainment? Oh my God. Well, that's all I have for entertainment right now, real quickly, but we'll have more next week. All right. And, um, well, okay. Um, I want to thank everyone for listening to this show. This episode is. Uh, I think this is our third half or third episode we have of the show, and we you know we're working. We're, we're working on making on adding more episodes and being much more frequent uh, on. And of course, you, you're catching either you're catching this link on the Facebook on our on our in the bleachers page, or you're listening to this stuff on the YouTube channel that we have for 24/7 Miami, and you can listen in. And uh, any questions, comments, concerns, you know, leave it right at the bottom. You know, I'm, I, you know what's funny when I do that? I always point down, and um, there's no camera here, by the way. <laughs> Yet I still do that. Hey, point, leave a comment down there. Down where? No where it's, it's a radio. Over there. Over there. <laughs> you know, point at different spaces. So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, Drew, it was great talking to you, catching up with you on this uh, half-hour episode of uh, In the Bleachers. In the Bleachers. In the Bleachers. Oh, you know what I want to do? I want to do something like, you know how, like, um, what was it, Siskel and Ebert, uh, the balcony? What was it called again? Uh... The mezzanine? Yeah, yeah, you know, at the end it's like, and the balcony is closed. <laughs> nah, I like it better. We used, to, we used to go on cruise ships and we used to do a game called Novel, Novel Quest, and they would always say, and this quest is now closed. Oh, I like that. I like that. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> beautiful, it's beautiful. So with those words, Hi, with, the, with those words, we wrap up the show. I'm Lou. And I am Drew. <laughs> and this quest is now clear.